We started this problem the other day, power screw with a major diameter of 32 millimeters, a pitch of four millimeters, and with double threads. It's to be used as shown in figure 8.4 below. It has both thread and collar friction equal to 0 0.08. The collar diameter is 40 millimeters, and the force that it's required to raise is 6.4 kilonewtons. So the first question that is asked in this case is the thread depth, thread width, pitch diameter, minor diameter, and the lead, and we're gonna need all of that stuff. Stuff. And the reason we want to talk about that is we have to do some calculations. We know that if the pitch is given, and we know that the pitch in this case is 4 millimeters, so P is equal to 4 millimeters, we know that the thread height is going to be half of that. It's going to be 2 millimeters, and the base width here is going to be 2 millimeters, and so is the top of the square thread. All right, so that allows us then to calculate a mean diameter. We want to go from the center of the shaft out to the midpoint of the threads, mean thread diameter is going to be equal to the outer diameter, which in this case they say is 32 millimeters. That's the major diameter. So we have 32 millimeters, and we're going to subtract from that P over 2. So the mean diameter is 30 millimeters. The next thing that comes up is, we've already talked about the thread depth, which is going to be P over 2. That's 2 millimeters. The thread width is 2 millimeters. Uh, the pitch diameter, that's that mean diameter. That's going to be 30. Now we got to get at the minor diameter. So the minor diameter is going to be the diameter that's associated with the base of the teeth. And so the minor diameter is going to be equal to the major diameter, which is 32. We have to actually subtract the pitch from that. So we're going to end up subtracting 4 from it. We get that the minor diameter is 28 millimeters. So we've taken care of just about everything up here except the lead. The next question is, what is the lead? The lead is going to be equal to the number of threads times the pitch. We've said that we have two threads and the pitch is four, so that the lead is going to be eight millimeters. The reason we need all that is because we need to understand how to calculate the torque required, which is this second question right here, to raise and lower the load. And the torque required to raise the load is going to be the torque against thread friction with that load, and I have to add to that the collar friction term. Well, we know that the torque to required to overcome the thread friction is just going to be the force that we are applying through the actuation times that pitch diameter divided by 2, so that's a radius. We multiply that by the lead plus pi f times this mean diameter over pi times the mean diameter minus the coefficient of friction times the lead. We have all of those things now, so we can plug them into that equation, but we have to add to this the force f, and we multiply that by the collar friction friction, which in this case is the same as the thread friction. We multiply that by the collar effective collar radius. We know what all of those terms are. Collar diameter is 40, so we know that the collar radius is 20 millimeters. If we plug all of those things into this equation, including the force requirement that was imposed on us of 6.4 kilonewtons, so we use F equals 6.4 kilonewtons. The lead is equal to 8 millimeters. The coefficient of friction, which is equal to the collar coefficient of friction, is 0 0.08. We calculated that the mean diameter was equal to 30 millimeters and the collar diameter is 40 millimeters. We plug all of that into the equation above and we get that the torque required to raise against the 6.4 kilonewton load is 26 newton meters. So we have the first part of the problem taken care of. The next thing that we are asked to do in this particular problem, so we've taken care of A and B, we need to find the efficiency during lifting the load and that efficiency is simply given by the frictionless torque over over this raising torque. And the frictionless torque is if you let the coefficient of friction go to zero in this term up here, you lose this term entirely. So you let the coefficient of friction go to zero and you get a very simple form for the frictionless term. And you find that this efficiency can be calculated by taking the force that you are re required to raise or exert times the lead divided by two pi times the torque required with friction. If we solve that problem, we get a, an efficiency of about 0.31 or roughly 31%. So we do a lot of work against friction. This concludes the basic calculations. Next step, we talk about thread and body stresses.